Hello and welcome to Dr. Manoj's quick revision of important points for the second unit in your environmental science and engineering course EVS which is environmental pollution. Watch and carefully listen to grasp the major concepts and key points. However, you must refer to one of the recommended textbooks for a more complete study. So, let's begin. First of all, it's very important to look into what is in your syllabus since most of the questions are set from this base point. Familiarizing yourself with the syllabus is a very good way to make sure that you have not missed any vital points during your revision for the tests or examinations. But don't worry, I will show you a very easy way to organize this unit so that the answers come pouring out of your pen in a logical, orderly fashion. Ready? Good. Right then. I want you to use a simple technique to remember this unit on environmental pollution. First of all, we need to define environmental pollution broadly as any undesirable change in the environment brought about by physical, chemical or biological agents. Now, you need to familiarize yourself with the basic concepts of seven different types of pollution, namely air, water, thermal, soil and noise pollution along with nuclear hazards and municipal solid waste management. Now, here is a neat little trick that I would like to teach you. When you need to define any kind of pollution, simply use this first definition and change the word environment with the kind of pollution. So, for example, air pollution can be defined as any undesirable change in the air. Water pollution can be defined as any undesirable change in the water and so on. But you need to get creative with the definitions of noise, thermal, nuclear hazards and solid waste management. Fine. Now, for any kind of pollution, there are six broad subheadings under which you describe them. Of course, first you need to define the pollution that occurs as air or water or soil, etc. Then, you need to describe the sources of that particular pollution followed by the major types of that particular type of pollution. Then you can enumerate the effects of the pollution before finally moving on to its prevention and control. We shall look into each briefly now. Ready? One, two, three. Okay, let's go. Okay. We shall now one by one see the major aspects for answering or describing any kind of environmental pollution. As I already told you, you need to first define the kind of pollution properly. Following this, all manners of pollution must originate from some point or a group of points. This we shall call as sources of pollution which are again of two types. If the source of the pollution is singular, such as a single, single chimney spewing toxic smoke out of a factory, we call it as a point source since we can pinpoint and locate it easily for further action. However, if an entire industrial area spews out toxic smoke, it is very difficult to identify which of the industries are actually contributing to the pollution. But it is still a source and we call such sources as non-point sources of pollution. The third important description for any kind of pollution are its types which differ from pollution to pollution. However, the most important types of pollution or pollutants are of two types, namely biodegradable and non-biodegradable. Biodegradable pollutants are easy to remove or treat from a polluted environment since they can decompose naturally. But non-biodegradable pollutants are not so easy to remove and persist for a much longer time. Plastic bags and heavy metals are very important pollutants which come under non-biodegradable types of pollutants. The fourth is about the effects that any kind of pollution causes to the environment, plants and animals. The fifth and sixth aspects are very important since they are about the prevention and control of pollution. It is very important to remember 
that there is a clear difference between prevention of pollution and control of pollution. Prevention is about avoiding the occurrence of pollution in the first place. Preventive steps range from simple steps such as using public transportation to reduce air pollution to moving residential areas away from industrial zones. Now, control of pollution comes into place when you cannot prevent the occurrence of pollution such as in an industrial process, but you can control it from causing excessive damage to the environment. Control of pollution is done using different types of pollution control technologies. That's the basic introduction to environmental pollution and how you go about systematically studying any kind of environmental pollution. Thank you.